If you've ever been intrigued by how to use herbs or prefer not to use medicine but would rather try a different route, my guest Nicole tells us some easy, simple ways that you can begin to incorporate herbs into not only your diet but maybe as... Welcome to Health, Harmony, and Happiness with Kathy. I'm your host, Kathy Stricker. I'm a wife to a law enforcement officer and mama to three lively littles. I'm a business owner, yoga teacher, health coach, and wellness and life enthusiast. And what I really like doing is connecting others like you with resources that could bring you health, harmony, and happiness on your life journey. These three elements are a result of that inner light that flows naturally through you and brings contentment. They happen when you seek to live mindfully as your best self and tune in to following this inner guidance. May this podcast serve as a nudge to discover tools that could help you on your path towards more conscious living. Hey friends, I can't even tell you how excited I am for this interview today. I sat down and talked with Nicole Seville from Spiritus Vitae Botanicals based out of Lincoln, Nebraska, and she is a wealth of knowledge on medicinal herbs. She and her husband believe that food can be used as medicine. They also believe in being good stewards of the land and that if you take care of the soil, then you take care of everything else that comes from it. So they put these two passions together and created a medicinal herb farm that does just that. Creates life to give back life to those who utilize the herbs and botanicals that they grow. This idea of what you put into something you will receive from it is one that I think we kind of need to be reminded of frequently in life. We get wrapped up in the hurry, the rush of everything that's going on around us and forget to be intentional, forget to notice those simple blessings that we've been given, like how to care for each other, how to care for ourselves so that we can heal. Nicole and her husband provide some tools that can help you begin to do just this. To get the show notes for today's episode and a link to the Spiritus Vitae website, head over to cairnyogawellness.com slash podcast 30. I've also got a free guided meditation to help you find harmony within during this time of chaos, now ready for you to download on the website as well. So head over to karenyogawellness.com slash podcast 30 to access all of that. And thanks again to those of you who have already left ratings or reviews on Apple Podcasts. And if you haven't, I'd be so appreciative if you did. Nicole, it's so good to talk to you. And um, I briefly kind of met you at one of the Des Moines winter markets. And I said, I really think I want you on the podcast because I want to know more about this stuff. So tell my listeners what it is you do. Sure. So my husband and I, we own and operate uh, a small medicinal herb farm just outside Lincoln, Nebraska, called Spiritus Vitae Botanicals. And uh, we actually chose that name with a great deal of intention, even though it's very hard for some people to pronounce. Uh, So Latin was a very big part of my herbal education. Um, We weren't allowed to talk about herbs unless we used the Latin names. And by using those Latin names, you can really tell what they were for, where they came from, uh, what they were used for. And so we chose Latin in our name, which means spirit of life. And so uh, what we like to focus on as Spirit of Life Botanicals is um, sort of encouraging life on the farm. And by doing so, we also get to harvest these wonderful medicinal herbs and make them into the products that we sell. And so we have um, 37 acres on the farm but we only have about two or three acres in production, but that changes from year to year. And then we have a small commercial kitchen in Lincoln where all of our products are made. And then we go to several farmer's markets in the area, which is where you saw us in Des Moines. Yeah, 
Absolutely. And we'll talk about that a little bit more or where people can find you um, in a little bit. But that is so fantastic. So how did you or what drew you to doing medicinal herbs and to, to going to school for this? Sure. So I actually dabbled in medicinal herbs when I was fairly young. I discovered um, valerian, which is a root herb at a very young age. I would think I was 11 or 12 at the time. And um, at the time, my parents were going through a divorce. And my best friend's mom saw that it was having an effect on me. I wasn't sleeping very well. I was a little bit anxious all the time. And so she made me some valerian tea one time when I spent the night. And I've been I've been hooked ever since. So uh, I did a lot of research on my own growing up, just whatever I could find. One of my first books was Rodale's Guide to Herbal Medicine. And then I just would see things like thyme and lavender at the garden stores and started planting my own. Um, and then as I got older, I moved to Seattle and discovered that there was a bachelor's degree option in herbal medicine. And so as soon as I found that program, I knew that that's exactly what I was going to do. That's incredible. Yeah, I got so really lucky. This friend's mom, was she into a lot of herbs or did like... Nobody has valerian. Right. Why I is... think, yeah, she was kind of a, kind of a witchy mom, yeah. you know, in the best way, like a, like a, like a green witch or a good witch. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So, and she used a lot of natural remedies. They lived on a farm and so they didn't have, they were very rural. They didn't have a lot of access to some of the conventional things that you see in grocery stores today. And so she, she was growing it in her own backyard and she happened to have some. That is so cool. That is yeah. so cool. Something that it's just knowing what, you know, we can get from the earth and what we can get from mm. um, that God has just naturally given us to use it to heal is such a powerful, right. such a powerful tool and such a powerful thing. And gosh, I'm, I, I'm just amazed. Like, you know, so much, I'm sure. <laughs> so why herbal medicine like there because you can you can use herbs for teas and you can become an expert in that and and all of that but why sure. herbal medicine what what spoke to you about that route of course also would you explain what do you define herbal medicine as good question so you know there are a lot of herbs that cross over between medicine and food and so really all it comes down to is your intent even if you just want to enjoy this and, you know, maybe maybe you're putting a little bit of garlic in your spaghetti sauce, you know, then you're just enjoying it. It's food. It tastes delicious. But if you, say, start eating cloves of garlic to keep you well, then then you're using it as medicine. But it's still food. And so there's a lot of crossover there. Um, and we really can take care of ourselves with the things that we now as a society start to take for granted. You don't think about um, the little bit of rosemary that you're sprinkling into your food as being medicine, but it absolutely is and can be. So um, really when it comes down to what is herbal medicine, it's really just you know how you're using it. What are sure. you trying to get out of it? So does that mean that like it depends on the, I don't wanna say the dose, but the amount that you are using for something. Sure. So that is one aspect. Um, and yeah, I try to avoid the word dosage as well, just because I'm, I'm not a, a medical right. professional. Um, but it does come down to, um, uh, yeah, amounts. So let's say you take just a pinch of rosemary and you put it in your spaghetti sauce, it's going to taste good. It's not necessarily going to have any, um, medicinal value, but if you were to make a cup of rosemary tea, where you're using, say, an entire tablespoon of rosemary, then you're really going to notice um, a difference. Sure. So, yeah. That makes sense. Okay, so let's get back to why herbal medicine resonated with you then. Yeah, so it honestly goes back to my friend's mom. Um, her name was Deb, 
And uh, she's unfortunately no longer with us, but I will give her give her the honor of, of doing a name drop there. Uh, her name was Deb, and she she was fantastic. Um, she really showed me that there are easy, accessible options that we can cultivate and have ourselves. We don't have to rely on a system to provide things for us. We don't have to rely on others. We we can take the responsibility for our health into our own hands. And, and we should. Um, I think yeah. that's something that a lot of us have lost connection with, um, with the convenience of conventional medicine nowadays. Totally. Um, I like that you say that it's empowering people to learn to take care of themselves. And that's Absolutely. exactly the message that the style of yoga that I teach, which is adamantine yoga that's oh, the yeah. approach that it takes. Um, when I work with my students, I'm not at the front of the room telling them exactly what to do, what next posture to do, and how sure. to do it. Um, I work with people individually to develop their own sequence of postures based around the adamantine sequence um, so that they know that's a tool that they can go to anytime, just like herbal medicine. That's a tool that somebody can use and can go to anytime because they can get the resources on their own. They can, they can learn and start to heal their body. Same thing with adamantine yoga. It's a resource. It's a tool, whether you're using it for anxiety, whether you're using it just because you feel better, um, to create that balance in your body. It's a tool that you, that you go to, um, so that's kind of cool. That's, that's a, that's a neat correlation, I guess, with that. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, you know, like you said, it's a tool in your toolbox and there are so many mm -hmm. tools that we have at our disposal that people have lost connection to. Yeah. So it's just one, one more tool in the toolbox. And it's all about feeling better. And yeah, you know, the foods we consume these days, the majority of the population, I should say, are so filled with um, unnatural things, with toxins, oh. with preservatives that people don't even realize make them feel a certain way. And sure. probably not as good as if they're consuming foods and herbs and, um, and natural foods that are coming from the earth. Right? Absolutely. Yep. And the unfortunate thing is we have had this diet for so long that you don't even realize you don't feel good. Right. Because it's just it's just your norm. You've developed a baseline. numbness to it. Yeah. And it's like this. Well, that's that's just how life is. You don't even yep. realize the inflammation that's in your body until you actually take some of those things out and and do a strict clean out of your body. And then you realize, wow, I feel a lot better. So it's Absolutely. the reintroduction that that really <laughs> uh, that really then messes with you. But once you yes. know that and once you know that those foods have that impact on you. It's, it's like you can't unknow it. You cannot right. yes. unknow it. And then when you do it, you just have to be prepared and know, like, this is going to make me feel this way. Um, Absolutely. But it's good that there's resources. So the herbs and, and things that you guys are providing are resources to help combat some of that. And just bring people to that awareness of, oh, there is something more out there. Um, Absolutely there's something else that I can use to, to help with that. Mm -hmm. So we are talking a little bit about using those resources that we've been given. <laughs> so let's go into talking about how to be stewards of what we have been given of the resources that we have been given. Um, you guys are advocates for using the land wisely for giving mm. back to the earth and for, um, for being good stewards of the land. What does that mean to you? Sure. So that's, um, so it's a big question, but I can tell you what we do specifically. So, uh, when we first gained access to the land we're on, and just as a preface, the land we are on was conventionally farmed for about 25 years before we moved onto it, but it had sat fallow for at least 10 before we touched it. So it went from 25 years in conventional land to 10 years of absolutely no care whatsoever. And just whatever wanted to grow there could grow there. It was un untended. Um, and so when we moved onto this land, we knew we had a lot of work to do. So we first we put in a pond, 
um, so that we could catch all of the rainwater that was running off the land um, and have a natural source of water should we need it. So we did sculpt the land so that all the water would run to the pond and wasn't just lost. Um, so that was our first big move. Um, and then we started working with a local landscaper who brings out all of his um, grass clippings and fallen leaves, and we add that back to the soil. Um, and so we, we are actively adding carbon to the soil because a lot of carbon gets lost during conventional farming. Um, and so we build that carbon up where we want to grow things and we let it sit and break down and we let the microbes do their thing and let the worms do their thing. And so after a year where we've put all of this extra carbon, we have what we like to call black gold because the soil is so healthy. It's so alive. Um, and it, it's just fantastic. It's so nutrient dense. Um, and then we also do, we have chickens on the farm and we let them free range. And so we get their, their beneficial droppings. We get the pest control. So we're not using any kind of fertilizers or, um, chemicals to control pests. And then we make sure that when we do harvest from the land, we don't over harvest. And what that means to us is that we leave, we leave some behind for the bugs, for the animals, and when we've finished harvesting, we let the land rest. So we don't just put crops back in the same spot and continuously try to tax the land with what we're doing. We let it rest. We let it recover. Truly and then giving we'll come back. Truly giving back. Yep. Our, our entire goal, even if we don't get to stay on this land long term, is to make sure the land is in better condition than we found it. Yeah. And so that's our big goal. That is that is just wonderful. And and. When you think of that, like the human body, that that's what we need as people too. Um, Absolutely. And it's kind of what this this time of this coronavirus is maybe telling us Ugh. that like, hey, people, <laughs> you're a little out of control. Maybe you need to yes. rest a little bit. Maybe you need <laughs> to take some time and, and remember what's important in life. And Absolutely. That doesn't obviously help. Um, with the economy or anything, but sure, it's a like awakening, you know, to many people. I think that are are realizing like, oh, we got to stop. Like it's making us stop. It's it's absolutely. Just, it's it's interesting how God is kind of working in that way and saying you have to stop now. I'm just going to force you because. <laughs> yep. No, <laughs> you're a hundred percent taking right. over. Yep. And that's something that if you if you look at the human body, like you're saying, you you run yourself ragged, you're stressed out, you're tired, your body is saying, hey, let's rest. And then you go, nope, I can't. I have to push through this. I have too many responsibilities, too many things to do. And then your body goes, OK, well, you're not going to listen to me. I'm going to make you sick. Yeah. So now you're sick. Now you have to rest. You don't have any choice. Right. And so if you had just taken a second and taken some time for yourself and rest, then maybe maybe you wouldn't be where we are. Right. So, yeah, right. it's a matter of listening. Listen to your body. Listen to the earth. Listen to the messages that are being sent. Yeah. And that's that's where what you grow comes into play. Mm -hmm. So you don't use any sort of chemicals, right? None. Like it's None all whatsoever. natural. All natural. Yep. Because we believe if, if the animals want it and the bugs want it, we're doing something right. I love it. Um, <laughs> I just interviewed or I just had one of my podcasts a few weeks ago was with Jill B. Bout. And she's with Blue Gate Farm, who she also has a booth at the Farmer's Market. The, yeah, the they Des Moines sound familiar. Farmer's Market. Yeah. Yeah. And she told me the exact same thing. She said, if it's good enough for the bugs, it's good enough for us. So That's <laughs> right. I love it. I absolutely <laughs> love it because, because it's so true. It's so yes. true. And we need those bugs. I mean, we need, we need, we don't like some of the pests, but well, like sure. you said, like the chickens are controlling them and, yeah. um, Oh, I love that. That's fantastic. Yes. yes. So what are some of the herbs that you do grow? And what, what are some of the, the, like the three most common herbs that you grow? Oh, boy. You know, it changes from year to year. Um, 
in terms of highest in demand, uh, elderberries right now, um, skull cap in the summer, and gosh, lemon balm, I would say, are, are the ones that we grow the most of. Um, but we also grow some herbs that I think are starting now because of the virus situation that are going to start gaining in popularity. Um, a, an example of that is astragalus. That one is an herb that's been used for a very long time for immune support. Oh. And I think people are going to start realizing that it's beneficial for this virus. Um, so do you have something that has that in it? So do we do have, grow do astragalus. You... Well, we don't have any products with astragalus in it because, unfortunately, that's an herb that requires three years of growth before you can harvest it. Yeah. So, wow. um, unfortunately, we won't have any for a little while, but it is in the field. Um, and I think we're going to start seeing a lot of demand for that. What else but, do you use for immune support? Um, so, elderberry is going to be the one that I think most people are familiar with right now. Um, echinacea is another really popular one, and we grow that. Um, some of the more lesser-known herbs, though, uh, lemon balm is an antiviral. A lot of people oh. don't think about it for that. Uh, most people think about it for calming anxiety or nerves, but lemon balm is a fantastic antiviral. So how would you use that? How do you use lemon balm? Sure. So it's a, it's a leafy herb, just like uh, mint. It's in the mint family. Mm -hmm. And so you can do it as simply as making a tea with it. You can incorporate it into your cooking. If you wanted to make uh, an herbal liqueur, you could do that and use it as a treat for yourself. Um, so there's a lot of ways that I think people, people overthink it. As long as you're getting into your system, it's going to be good for you. Now, do you have lemon balm already like in a tea form. I have no idea how you even make yes. teas or anything. Do you have to dry the herbs first? I mean, that's my so guess, but we do just for longevity of the herbs, we dry them and we do have some in tea form. Uh, but you can use it fresh too. If you wanted to say, uh, chop some up and throw it into your cooking, mm. you can use it fresh. You can make a tea from it fresh as well, but the, uh, water content of the leaves themselves, you'd have to adjust your ratios a little bit. But yeah, we have it in dried form for simplicity. It goes into a lot of our tea blends, but we just also have it as a single. I think we get it in our CSA box. We do a CSA box from Blue Gate Farm every oh, nice. summer. And I think we've gotten it. And I don't know that I've known how to use it. And I don't know that I, or I've just used it in a recipe that they've provided. Oh, sure. Um, but I don't know. Now that intrigues me a little bit more. Yeah. So you mentioned, you can, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, if you have some leftover, um, you know, just, just pour some boiling water over it okay. and let it steep, even if it's loose, um, or you can put it into one of those tea balls or a tea bag and just sure. make a tea out of it. Even if it's, um, it's in that fresh leaf form. Yep. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. And it's super tasty. So you don't have to hide it in anything. Um, I like to tell folks with kids to put it into popsicle molds. Mm and freeze it. And so the kids think they're getting a treat, but they're getting their medicine too. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, you mentioned skull cap. What is that? I've never uh, even so heard that's, of it. Yeah, that one is another member of the mint family. Um, it, we actually have a native version in the United States, but the one we grow, I don't believe is native, but it's an herb, another one for stress. Oh. And uh, it's one that is in such high demand that we can't we can't keep up with it. Um, it's an herb that's appropriate for everyone, given the society we live in, the stressful yeah. nature of our lives. It's one that I think everybody should have. How do you get um, your hands on that then if you can't keep up with it? <laughs> uh, grow it yourself. Honestly, it's awesome. a member of the mint family. So, you know, you're not going to have any trouble. Sure. Uh, and honestly, it'll probably take over your garden and you'll yeah. have quite a bounty. But if you can keep it contained in pots or just being very good about cutting it back as needed. Um, yeah. But it's super easy to grow and it's really good for you. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Um, we've talked a lot about easy ways that people can begin to incorporate herbs and, and some of those healing benefits into their lifestyle. But do you have any other tips on how, like... In a beginner's guide, someone who's saying, 
Well, I don't even know how I would use anything um, from someone who grows herbs or or botanicals. What sure. Would, you know, you you get these people at the market. I know you do. Oh, who come up like absolutely. I don't even yes. know how to use this. Why would I do this? Yes. <laughs> what do you say? So. I think the easiest thing to remember is that it's never as difficult as as people want you to think it is, as the herb companies want you to think it is, because they want you to buy that final product. But at the end of the day, we all have the ability to use herbs in our daily lives. And it can be, like I said, as simple as putting a little extra rosemary, a little extra oregano in your spaghetti sauce, or putting two or three times as much garlic in that homemade salsa. Um, but if you are looking to maybe expand your knowledge and use, step into teas. They are super easy to make. You can throw it into your water bottle on your way out the door. Um, it doesn't have to be a hot tea during the summer. You can do sun teas and then pour them over ice. So you have iced tea and, you know, it doesn't have to be something that takes a whole lot of prep or a whole lot of thinking. Um, You could even do something as simple as getting your favorite bottle of wine, uh, taking a quick sip off the top just to make a little room in the bottle, and then take a handful of herbs and drop them right into that bottle of wine. Let it sit for a week or two, shaking it every day, strain the herbs out, and then you have medicinal wine. Sweet. It really is that simple. Um, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be this big, drawn-out process. You don't have to put a lot of effort into it. It really is very easy. That's awesome. Thank you. Those are good tips. Of course. Okay, let's get into some of the products that you guys have at the market and that you have available online too. Mm -hmm. Um, What is fire cider? Oh, that is a very big question. Um, So fire cider was created by Rosemary Gladstar in either the late seventies or the early eighties. Um, she, she made it up with one of her classes back in the day and they coined the term fire cider at the time because it's a spicy apple cider vinegar, um, tonic, I guess would be a good way to, to describe it. But there was some, there was some legal issues with it for several years that just recently got resolved. Um, but so now fire cider is available to the public um, and it's a uh, it's raw organic apple cider vinegar with just a whole slew of different herbs and veggies. And typically what you find in fire cider is onions, garlic, horseradish, um, cayenne, ginger, some of those spicy and warming herbs. And then you can take any any other herb you want and make it your own. So I've had people put um, lemon balm, hyssop. Um, thyme, oregano, echinacea, astragalus, anything that you want to be getting into your body on a regular basis in this fire cider, you can put in there. There's no, there's no wrong way to do it, but because it's a vinegar, it's also food. So you can use it as a salad dressing or a marinade or put it into your smoothies or on your veggies. So it doesn't have to be something that you feel obligated every sure. day to take. It could be something you enjoy. If you were but, going to take it, how much would you take at a time? And is it is it really spicy? So it depends on how you make it. I put just a little bit of cayenne in ours. And so it's pretty, um, what I like to say, user-friendly. But I've had some people put things... Um, like really, really hot peppers, jalapenos. Um, I had a friend make it once with ghost peppers and he said he couldn't even drink it because it was too spicy. Yeah. Um, So it just depends. Some people prefer not to have it be spicy at all. And you can do that too. As long as there's still herbs and veggies in there, it's going to be good for you. So it doesn't have to be spicy. Cool. Oh, and to answer your question, how much to take. Um, So a daily, like just as a tonic, if you just want to take it every day for your wellness, it would be about half an ounce a day. Um, But if you are under the weather, if you're not feeling very well, we tell folks to take as much as you honestly can stomach. um, Because the more you have it in your system on a on a consistent basis, the better it's going to be for you. Cool. So we say you can't take too much but you can take too little. 
Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so I know some of the benefits of apple cider vinegar, but will you go into that and share with listeners what are some of the benefits of taking apple cider vinegar and, and having that in your system as well? Sure. So the biggest effects um, that you see down the line in terms of like uh, health or excuse me, skin condition, hair condition, it all boils back to the state of your gut because everything in the body is connected to what's going on in your digestive system. And so apple cider vinegar has live bacteria in it. And what you're doing is basically giving your gut the bacteria it needs to thrive and to do what it's supposed to do and to process all the nutrients that you should be getting in your, in your diet. Um, and so you're getting those good bacteria. So at the end of the day, it's all about getting those bacteria into your system. And we lose a lot of that in our daily lives. You know, the food that we eat kills that off. The antibiotics we take kills that off. Um, and so at the end of the day, it's that it's those good bacteria. Good. Cool. Yeah. And then everything else sort of comes from that. So, you know, you're feeling a little bit less anxiety because your gut is where it's supposed to be. Your skin is starting to glow. Your hair is starting to shine. You're maybe losing some of the excess fat on your body because your digestive system is working like it's supposed to. Yeah. It, it allows for that flora and fauna kind of growth or whatever that is in your, in your gut. Exactly. Right? Yep. Exactly. Okay, so let's move on to syrups. You have lots of different flavors of syrups. What do you use these for? Sure. So um, the elderberry syrup is extremely popular right now. And um, I hate to say that we'll have it when this comes out because I can't make that guarantee. Yeah. Um, but right now the elderberry syrup is being used as an antiviral because elderberries have been proven to have a very strong antiviral effect in the body. Um, but we've also made it super tasty. So if you just wanted to put it on ice cream or pancakes, you could do that too. Um, so again, you it doesn't, just it doesn't take have that to be as pretty. like a, as a, like a teaspoon or I, I, how, I don't yep. know how much, but you would just take it as you would take yep. a medicine. You'd take the syrup instead, but it's more fun to use it with food. That's right. <laughs> so what I like to do, especially when I'm not feeling very well, is I'll make a cup of our immune support tea and then I'll do a splash of the elderberry syrup in there just for a little added boost and to make it taste good. So, cool. um, but yes, it is antiviral. So you can just take it straight. Um, and that's a really good way to get kids to take it because it's really, really yummy. But if you wanted to use it as food, you can do that too. Do you yeah. just use that every day then to to keep your immune system um, strong or so, do you use it more during this time of illness or during the winter when, when there's more of that going on? Yes. So um, I have heard of some people taking it daily, which is fine if you wanted to do that. But the antiviral properties of elderberry aren't going to do anything unless there's a virus in the body for it to act mm. on. And so if you're not actively ill it's probably not doing as much for you as you want to think. Now, don't if, if it makes you feel better, by all means, do whatever makes you feel better. Um, but at the end of the day, it's going to do, it's going to be most effective when you sort of feel a little under the weather sure. or you are actively under the weather because it works on the virus itself, not necessarily on your immune system. Sure. So like when you yeah. first start to feel like you maybe when I know when I'm getting a cold, I start to sneeze like a day or so before and I just get yep. some sneezes and that would be the time then to ramp up and to start exactly some of that. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. Um, and then the other syrups that we have listed online, we're actually getting ready to discontinue those. Um, they are the ginger syrup, the lavender syrup and the chai syrup. And, um, so we actually don't make any claims on those specifically. We say they're mostly for uh, flavor or to, to add a little zing to things. And that's just because, it, I'll give you an example, the ginger syrup. Ginger is classically known as an anti-inflammatory, but because it's in syrup form, it has sugar in it. And sugar triggers the inflammation response in the body. And so they sort of cancel each other out, but it's delicious. Yeah. Um, and then the same goes for lavender. Lavender is uh, good for anxiety or for restlessness. It's going to calm you down. 
but then there's sugar in it. Yeah. And so, <laughs> but it sounds uh, delicious. Oh, they are super tasty. Um, but because they don't really have any medicinal value, they don't necessarily align with what we do. Um, we made them because people were asking us for them, Yeah. but we've gotten so busy, um, that we unfortunately had to, had to cut those out of our offerings. And so we only have available what's left from the last batch That's cool. of each of those. Um, and so by the time this airs, there may not be any left, but, might not. Um, but, but I might uh, have to go get some for myself <laughs> knowing that. <laughs> yes. Yes. They are still, uh, on our website. And if we have any, by the time farmer's market season rolls around, we'll, we'll bring them with us, but cool. unfortunately we're not going to make any more. Cool. So, yeah. Okay. What's the most unusual thing that you sell or that you recommend to people? Ooh, I think in unusual in terms of, um, weird to the people would be either the whorehound lozenges or the J Kloss liniment. And, um, I think basically what that boils down to is people just being so disconnected from the knowledge that our elders had or have. Um, and by that, I mean, specifically in the case of whorehound lozenges, um, my grandparents used to just, they, that was just their candy. You know, they were just whorehound candies, um, but they have a medicinal value. And so we're trying to, we're trying to bring those back what are a they little good bit. For? So whorehound is a classic bitter herb. And so it's really good for the digestion, but it's also really good for the lungs and sore throats. So um, spastic coughs, um, like I said, sore throats, anything like that, they're good for that. But they're, they are bitter, and bitterness is something that we as a society have lost um, our desire for, even though we very, very much need it. And so I think a lot of people get sort of turned off by the bitterness. Do you think, and this is something that I learned just from from using oils and everything, that some sometimes the things that we are the most repulsed or that, that we don't want to have most mm -hmm. are the things that we need the most, right? Yeah, sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah, um, absolutely. And I think bitterness is one of those. I agree. And I think that our tastes have changed so much because of the foods that we eat. And because when you consume sweets all the time or when you, yes. you know, are, are drinking sugary beverages or um, eating processed food, it takes away, it just changes your tastes. It, it takes away from those, those rich tastes that, um, that we used to, or that we, we maybe had at one point as a society, but Absolutely. Yeah, we get we get so overwhelmed by sweetness that nothing else tastes as good. It becomes this thing that we that we focus on. Um, and then in the body, you start to grow the unwanted things um, because it feeds off of that sugar. And then you start to crave it more and more because your body has has acclimated to it. And the things that are now growing in your system thrive on sugar. It's such a drug. It's such oh. a drug. It really is. Ugh. Yeah. I struggle with it, though. I'll tell you that. Like, uh, my goodness. So true. Me too. It's, oh. it's, that's just a fact of life. Yes, I like yeah. brownies. Yeah. Yes, I will bring brownies to your birthday celebration. Right. I, I don't know. Like, that's just, that's who I am. I'm, I'm not at the point yet where I'm going to com completely cut out sugar yet. But well, and now they they hide someday. sugar in everything. So, know. you know, you put ketchup on your mm -hmm. hot dog and suddenly you have high fructose corn syrup yeah. in your system. Exactly. So you just can't get away with get away from it, you know? There's exactly. there's sweeteners in your toothpaste. I did you whole can't 30 get away from it. about 3 about 4 years ago, um 4 and a half years ago. And and I still like I I learned so much through that. Um mm. And we, it changed, we didn't eat completely. We didn't eat that unhealthy to begin with, but it just reminds me that, oh yeah, even all those condiments and every, every little thing, everything has sugar in it. It's everything. just, it's just present. It's just there. Yeah. Mustard. Here's an interesting thing. Yellow mustard does not. And oh. so I used mustard a lot during the whole 30. I was pregnant with, um, my middle child at that time. 
The girl loves mustard. She'll put <laughs> mustard on stuff before she'll put ketchup on stuff. And I'm like, oh, this is just fantastic. awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. So, <laughs> hey, worked for something, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, let's wrap this up. Um, I have two questions that I'm going to ask you. What is one way that you are living more mindfully right now? Ooh, that's a big question, um, especially given the current I climate. I, um, know. I know I personally have been, my anxiety levels have been much higher than I've ever had them be in the past. Even when I was in school, I, I don't think I was this anxious. Um, so right now that's been something I've been trying my best to focus on um, to the best of my ability. And right now for me, that means taking an extra uh, walk with the dogs or um, carving out a little bit of time for myself before I go to bed, um, you know, just alone so that I can breathe for a little while or, um, you know, finding some songs that I really used to like and, and just dancing it out. If I'm feeling particularly stressed out, I'll just get up and just move until I can't move anymore. Um, so that's, right now how I'm doing my best <laughs> I love it to stay present um, it doesn't always work as well as I'd like it to because I don't think there's anything that's gonna relieve the stress I think we're all feeling right now right but we each have to find something that that get, brings us back to center even if it's just for 30 seconds right. at a time right I wanted to share a resource with you I don't you've just mentioned a couple times about anxiety Mm -hmm. And I have a very good friend named Kelly Hanlon McCormick, and she's out of Kansas City, and she has a okay. podcast called the Transforming Anxiety Podcast. Ooh. She's brilliant, and she is posting. She's done a pod, a little mini podcast every day this week about how to deal with this in this scary yes. time. And she has some amazing, amazing resources online, um, also. And she's got she's got a. a project called the fierce calm project and it's you get online group coaching each week um, and it just helps you work through processing anxiety and where it comes from in your body and, and oh. how to deal with it yeah I'm actually doing that myself and it's it's just a every month there's a different topic um, oh that's fantastic but it is super super helpful and she is she's just brilliant. She's amazing. And, and the stuff that she comes up with is like, I can't say enough good stuff about her. She teaches at a oh. yoga also. Um, and that's how I met her originally through yoga. But I'll tell you, she is, she has been given this gift of helping with anxiety and it is incredible. So please oh. go out there and like check her out because yes. and her podcasts are great because they're like 20 minutes long and nice. you can throw them on and, and listen while you're doing something else, while you're getting dinner ready or whatever it may be. Sure. Um, I can't say enough good things. And since you yeah. mentioned anxiety, I need oh. to pass that resource on to you. Yes. <laughs> and I've had Kelly on as a guest, um, yeah. <laughs> but she was a guest and we talked about yoga and then we talked about anxiety a little bit too, but sure. I think I need her on again to just talk about anxiety. Yes. So. I think, I think that's something we could all benefit from right yeah. now. And I will yeah. link to all of that in the show notes too of this Fantastic. episode. So, um, so Perfect. it'll be out there. Okay, I have one more question for you. Okay. And that is, how does all of what you're doing, your business, um, create health, harmony, and happiness in your life? Oh, honestly, this is, this is my dream. This has been my dream since I was young. And honestly, I, I just achieving where we are right now has brought that level of satisfaction and happiness that, you know, when I was younger, I didn't think I would achieve. And honestly, sometimes it's hard to maintain that perspective, you know, in July when it's 120 <laughs> degrees outside. And the last thing I want to do is go harvest. Yeah. It's hard to appreciate it, but I'm, I've, I've achieved what I always set out to achieve. And I just have to keep remembering that. And so when I, when I can come back around to that perspective, I find that I am, 
I am as happy as I've as I've ever been. That's beautiful. So I know that sounds cheesy. No, and, it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> no, it doesn't. And, because you know how many people just push those dreams down and like and oh. think, oh, it's just not possible. It's it's not gonna happen. Yeah. Um, but you did it, and you're doing it, and you are serving so many people, and yeah. and you're expanding people's horizons on the fact that there can be a different way and it doesn't have to be all clinical. Yes. Oh, it, and it can be baby steps. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go from zero to 60 overnight. You know, you can incorporate one herb into your life one time and you've taken that first step. Yeah. Um, so that's just something I like to make sure people know. It doesn't have to be as overwhelming as it seems just baby steps at a turtle's pace. That's my <laughs> motto. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. Well, thank you so much, Nicole, for visiting with me today yes, and sharing you. your knowledge. And um, I'll link to your website and everything in my show notes page. Um, you can find Nicole at the Des Moines Farmers Market as well as Lincoln and what else? Omaha. Omaha. Okay. Yeah. And then tell everybody what is your website and how can they connect with you? Sure. So it's the business name spiritusvitebotanicals.com. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook and Instagram. And as soon as we get um, notification back from all the farmers markets, we'll have our dates up on our website. So you can where, know where to find us at the farmers markets. We will be at Des Moines once a month. I believe right now we have it set the third Saturday of every month. We'll be in Des Moines. And then, of course, we'll be at the winter markets as well. Um, but in the meantime, you can order online. Cool. Thank you so much. And let's just pray that this COVID-19 resolves and we're able to do the farmer's markets oh, as From planned, your lips you to know? God's ears. Like it's oh, such a such a time of the unknown and yes and it will all work out this is this is god's plan so yeah it's scary but yeah yeah it will get, we'll all get through it better for it so we will we will all right thanks nicole yes, have a thank good you, afternoon Kathy. all you right too. take care you too wow that was a fact-filled interview. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. I learned so much and it definitely makes me want to start to use herbs more. Uh, I'm not a huge tea drinker right now, but for some time now, I feel as though life has been calling me to drink more teas and that's one way I'm going to start. I'm going to head out to their website and pick up some of the teas that they have to offer and some of the other fun things. So check it out yourself. Um, I will link to their website as well as some of those other podcasts that we mentioned during the show in the show notes page so that you have quick reference to them. If you haven't had a chance to rate or review the show, now would be the time, especially since we are all staying home um, and staying safe and healthy. So head over to Apple Podcasts and leave a rating or review. I would be so grateful if you did that. I'll be back next week with my guest Stephanie Safarian of the Sustainable Minimalist Podcast. We'll be talking all about living a zero-waste lifestyle and how sustainability and minimalism go hand in hand. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Thanks for tuning in. If you like what you hear, Help us grow this podcast by sharing it with even just one other person. And it would mean so much to me if you would take a moment of your time to write a review. Your comments and feedback are what help me continue to bring you topics and guests that can help you and others on their journey in creating health, harmony, and happiness. Remember to head on over to cairnyogawellness.com to get the show notes and links from today's episode. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Cairn Yoga Wellness. And to continue connecting with more resources that could help you enhance health, harmony, and happiness in your own life, subscribe to this podcast. Thanks again for listening.